So thank you all for joining us today. And we're gonna look at, even though your nonprofit might be small, but you sure are mighty. And so with Giving Tuesday, we have a couple of tips for everyone. My name is Ashley Kefalitis. I'm the Community Development Specialist woo, here at Mighty Cause. I am excited to be with you today. Giving Tuesday is an exciting time. Just coming into that fall fundraising is certainly an exciting time. So thank you for carving out part of your calendar to spend the afternoon, to spend about 45 minutes with us. And as we get started, we'll take a quick moment to learn who is Mighty Cause. We like to do that so you know who we are, but then we'll focus our attention on what is Giving Tuesday and then we'll get into the tips, smart goals, your game plan, drive support, use what you have, and follow up. And as I was able to mention before, for those who were here a little early, we'll definitely have time for questions and answers at the end of the webinar. And you're welcome to submit those through either the question and answer box or through the chat box. But that'll all take place at the end. So a little bit about who is Mighty Cause. Uh, we've been dedicated to serving nonprofits since 2006. We offer a year-round platform for all of your fundraising needs, and we're specifically designed for the small to medium nonprofit. We certainly have some large nonprofits who use our platform, but you, the small nonprofit, that's who we are geared towards. And not only do we process donations, but we also provide peer-to-peer -peer fundraising pages, donor management tools, integrations, a number of other things that we'll mention throughout the webinar. But just like this webinar, we also have blogs and eBooks, just helpful fundraising information for throughout the year. But that's enough about that. Uh, so let's get on to Giving Tuesday. So what is Giving Tuesday? Giving Tuesday might be a little larger than some of you know, it was launched in 2012, and it's held annually the Tuesday after Thanksgiving, Black Friday, and Cyber Monday. And this is a global giving event that unifies nonprofits all over the world through a day of online giving and collaborative generosity. And this year, Giving Tuesday is going to fall on November 28th, and Mighty Cause is once again, we're hosting our big giving event. And we're excited to partner with you. And we like to spotlight small nonprofits. We like to spotlight not only the work you're doing, but also help you bring in donations. So for that, we offer peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, best-in-class donation tools, such as our matching grants tool. We have customizable donation checkouts, embeddable donation widgets, and we have downloadable reporting so that you can follow up with all of the activity of the day. And we also like to spice things up with a little bit of competition. We have leaderboards and hourly prizes just to keep things exciting throughout the day. All we ask is that you register at givingtuesday.mightycause.com. That way we know, one, not only that you're participating, but also how we can serve you, what leaderboard you can go on, things like that. And you can even make the most of Giving Tuesday through our advanced plan. So there's certain features that are provided just by registering. But if you're interested, we do have an advanced plan. So now all of our platform features would be unlocked. And this also provides extra benefits for the day of Giving Tuesday. So if you sign up now for our advanced plan, not only will you receive a free month towards your annual subscription, but we're also offering additional prize opportunities on Giving Tuesday for advanced customers only. And as you prepare for Giving Tuesday, you can take advantage of a free Giving Tuesday coaching session, as well as additional webinars and dedicated Giving Tuesday resources. So what would you be receiving on the advanced plan? We do have direct integrations with Salesforce, MailChimp, Google Analytics, and some others. And we offer hundreds of integrations through Zapier, so such as Constant Contact, QuickBooks, other things like that that just help with some of that um, data processing. We have an embeddable donation form that you can put on your website. You can also utilize text to give or post volunteer opportunities on your uh, organization profile page. We also have a built-in CRM, and that's directly within Mighty Cause, so you don't have to link 
to anybody else. You can import and download supporter information anytime. And all of this, not only is it self-service, but you also have a really great priority customer support feature. So whenever you have questions, whether it's you or your donor, you can reach out anytime. But that is enough about that. Let's get to some of those tips for the small nonprofit. We're gonna start with your SMART goals. Goals enable us to dream big without biting off more than we can chew. And this is why we start here with goals. And not only are they gonna give us a vision, they're also gonna begin to build that anticipation and your motive, momentum within your organization. So you're gonna talk through these things with the other leaders and some of your main volunteers. So this is where we're gonna start. And in order to get the most out of our goals, they need to be specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-based. So let's look at what this means in real life fundraising. Raising more money and getting more donors those are goals, but they're kind of broad, which means they're not really all that helpful in the grand scheme. So we want to consider three to five goals that we can really hone in on for Giving Tuesday. And these goals may even sort of filter through for your end of year goals as well. So let's say that our donor to those. And we can say that we want to retain at least 60% of our 2022 Giving Tuesday donors. And we want to secure 15 new recurring monthly donations. That gives us a little bit more specific so that at the end, we can judge how do we do, what can we do better, what can we do different. Or we might say, wow, we got 20 new recurring donations. Okay. Well, now going forward, we have a benchmark. I also want to encourage you to set at least one non-monetary goal. So this could be, for example, you've never created a fundraising campaign video. So your goal is to create a short video that you can post on social media for 2023. It's not a must-have, but it gives you that opportunity to practice some of those other fundraising techniques or opportunities that keep that engagement going on. And this is a great time to start because Giving Tuesday has such a focus. But okay, not everything can be done every year. So we also want these goals to be achievable and realistic, which means if this year is not the year to create a video, don't worry about it. Scratch it off the list, chat it over with your team and then move on, that's okay. But we do wanna look at where you are as an organization and your donors. So set goals that cause you to reach, cause you to grow, but that are doable. And you also want your goals to have parameters. And this is why time-based goals can be so helpful. They do add urgency, but they also have this relief point. So the urgency is that we only have a certain amount of time to get this done. But the relief is that this campaign doesn't go on forever. There is an end point. So when you have these specific goals with a metric involved and you have them within a certain time frame, now you know sort of how you're doing as the months go on. And you can share these goals with your supporters. You can get them on board, share them with your staff and your volunteers so that you're starting to build that excitement leading up to Giving Tuesday. And then these solid goals, these are gonna become the pillars for your Giving Tuesday fundraising game plan. Now your game plan, this is kind of where, where things take shape. And the key to a good game plan is planning ahead. But where do you start? We've got you covered. Mighty Cause offers on our Giving Tuesday website a nonprofit toolkit that really does have everything that you need. You can download the planning guide, the checklist, and the playbook, and these are going to have all the details and the steps that you need to get you started. But don't get overwhelmed. Don't get scared. It's not like planning a wedding where it's a whole big thing. 
It's just the right amount of prompts and the right number of templates to get you started for what you need. And you'll also want to gather together what we call all your dream team. And now I get it. You're a small nonprofit and you might not even have staff and that's okay. You can still create a dream team of collaborators, whether it's volunteers or board members, you can be small, large, doesn't matter. You're going to get that group together who are focused on the same thing. You can bounce ideas off one another and maybe you're wearing multiple hats. That's okay. Just get a group together so that you're not working alone as you make these decisions and as you make these plans. So what is it that you're planning? Go ahead and pick a 2023 Giving Tuesday message. Now, this could be the same theme that you've had all year, or it could be something unique for Giving Tuesday. But whatever it is, give your organization and your supporters a focus. It's not the, the same old, hey, it's Giving Tuesday, join the global event. You want it to be more specific. You want it to be more about you and what you're doing and what you have going on impact that you're making in your community. You want this to be something that's going to get your supporters excited. And then based on that message and that theme, now you're going to start to plan your content and your marketing. And we also don't want to get overwhelmed here. You're simply going to gather the content that you already have. So if you or others have taken pictures or videos throughout the year, just gather them all in one place. Maybe you have some testimonials or you have some quotes that people have said, hey, yeah, let me share what you've done in my life or for the people that I care about. Gather that information, touch base with a couple people, say, hey, we wanna use what you said for Giving Tuesday, make sure that's okay with them, but gather that all together. And then you're, you're ready you have some, some content to work with. And if you want to, go ahead and consider creating that new content this year. You don't have to, but consider maybe doing that. And here's where you're gonna wanna go and check out the Giving Tuesday graphics in the nonprofit toolkit. And you can take a picture that you already have, go ahead and post the Giving Tuesday 2023 graphic with it. And now you have even more content so you can, play around with what we have in the toolkit to grow your content base. And now that you have that content, you're going to plan your emails and your outreach. So emails are still effective. And it's one of the easiest ways that small nonprofits can boost your supporter interaction. And the best part is you don't have to create these emails from scratch. Take advantage of the email templates and the best practices we have within the Giving Tuesday toolkit. So you're going to have a timeline that you can follow. You'll have the templates where you can plug in your information. You can always jazz it up, make it more personal, add your own content. Absolutely. But we're going to go ahead and give you that launching off place. Just head over to the toolkit. Then you're going to repeat this process for your social media posts. Because a day like Giving Tuesday thrives on social media outreach. It's an online giving day. So those online opportunities, especially through social media, are really going to get your supporters involved. And not only can they donate through social media by clicking your links, they can be sharing your information, sharing your posts through their social media. So it's a, it's a big deal and it's an opportunity you don't want to miss. But again, everything that you need to know and the templates that you need for your social media outreach you're gonna find those in the Giving Tuesday nonprofit toolkit. So you might be sensing a little bit of a theme here. And since small nonprofits need help and it's not a knock on small nonprofits, you're doing a lot of work with a small team. So we're here, we've created the toolkit to help. All of the content is available to you. You might use some of it, you might use all of it, but the key is you don't have to create your own. So go in, see what you need, map out your timeline. You can kind of think of that toolkit as another member of your dream team that anybody can use at any time. So that tip number three, you want to be driving support. So you have your support, you have your donors, donators, your donors. So let's get them donating. Now, a main hurdle for a lot of nonprofits is a clunky website. 
or awkward donating. And this is big nonprofits, small nonprofits. It's a hurdle to your donors just making a donation. So as soon as possible, you want to go through your website and make sure that all of your links are working. Make sure your supporters can find what they need and that your donation flow is very straightforward. Now, since prizes are at stake on Giving Tuesday through Mighty Cause, you want all of your donating options to be streamlined and linked to your Mighty Cause organization profile page. And we make this super simple with our embeddable widget, which is what you see here on the slide. We also offer an embeddable donate button or thumbnail, or through our advanced plan, we do have a donation form. And you can embed any of these into your website so that donors can easily give to your Giving Tuesday campaign. Not only are you receiving those funds, but those funds then are gonna also be linked to your leaderboard. And as you climb up the leaderboard, other organizations are gonna see your progress, but also those different prizes we offer throughout the day. So donations do more on Giving Tuesday than just enter your bank account. They're also gonna open up those opportunities for the prizes. And not only does the donation count towards Giving Day, but any, non, any donation that's processed through Mighty Cause, we go ahead and we send that tax deductible receipt immediately to your donors as soon as that donation is submitted. We send it via email and that information is in real time added to your reporting so you can see throughout the day and in the months to come all of that donor information that you receive through Giving Tuesday. Also, as your donors are going and they're they're donating, they know some of them, okay, it's Giving Tuesday, I'm gonna go donate. Other times they see your promotion, whether it's through an email or through social media, and they say, oh, okay, what's going on? I haven't heard about Giving Tuesday. But in both cases, no matter why people are donating, you wanna give them the reason to give and the reason to give more. And you do that by simply asking them. So this could be, a general ask that you have, you know, kind of throughout the year, or you could have something that's compelling just for this time of year. Maybe it's a new initiative. Maybe it's a new program. Whatever it is, you want that call to action that's going to encourage people to donate today, right now. And not only that, but what you can do is you can, throughout your messaging, work in that call to action. Remember, you're collaborating with your donor, so you want them to be feeling involved with what you're doing. And not only with that call to action in your, your messaging, but even in your checkout flow, you're going to get really specific about what you want donors to give. And this is going to prompt them, and it's not only about giving more, but it's about taking ownership with their donation. So the more transparent you are, the more real you are about what your needs are, what your mission is, your upcoming plans, the more your donors can get involved. And you can do this through your checkout flow when you use the donation levels and the donation descriptions. And you can have more than four, although we're giving you um, an illustration of what four would look like. You can add those to your donors. They know where their funds are going, but that, again, it's that ownership, but also for some donors who go straight to the donation checkout flow, they maybe missed that call to action. So this is your opportunity to drive that home again. What you can also do in your checkout flow is you can add an extra question that gets just that one more piece of information from your donors. And it can be about the initiative that you're doing, or it can be along the lines of, are you interested in receiving our newsletter? Things like that. So you can customize your checkout flow. With the advanced plan, you have up to 10 customizable questions, so you can really get whatever information that, that you're hoping for. But the key takeaway here is that when you're calling your donors to donate, that you're giving them through those donation, uh, the amounts and the descriptions, you're giving them that ownership. If you're able, um, we all, and we do hope that you are, we also like to encourage organizations during Giving Tuesday to utilize that peer-to-peer -peer fundraising 
And this gets people, it gets your supporters sharing their personal stories about your work and why your organization is important to them and to your community. And you can ask anyone to become a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser. So this could be the board members, volunteers. If someone follows you on social media, if it's program alumni, it can really be anyone who has an interest in your organization. And all the fundraisers need to do is click that fundraise button on your organization profile page. And then they're on their way to creating their own individual fundraiser page. And that fundraiser page is what they're going to share with their friends and family. Now, I get it. Not all fundraisers want to customize a page. They don't know what to say. They don't know what picture to put. They, they just want to be helpful. I get it. So what you can do for them is create a fundraiser template. Super simple. You create one fundraiser template on your organization profile page. Anyone who creates a fundraiser has the option to use that template. And this way, even those who are timid, they can still become a fundraiser on your behalf. You've done that little bit of legwork for them at the beginning, but now they're off and running. So the options are great when it comes to peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Not only can people fundraise on their own, they can also fundraise as a team. So let's say that there's an, a group of office workers, they wanna get together and they wanna all fundraise for you, but they wanna maybe have a little competition between themselves. Or if you wanna host something bigger, you can make it more of an event where you have multiple teams coming together to fundraise. Now, these are all options. None of this is required, but that peer-to-peer -peer fundraising at Giving Tuesday is a great way to build your community. It reaches people that you can't reach. You can only send emails and the only people who you're, you're calling are the people who are already on your donor list or your supporter list. Well, that peer-to-peer -peer fundraising enables others to reach further into your community. Even if they don't bring in more donors, what they are doing every time they share their page is they are bringing awareness to what your organization does. And that down the road is gonna to continue to build your community. So definitely something to keep in mind and to consider as you're going through your planning and as you're looking through the different features on the Giving Tuesday site. Now, tip number four is to use what you have. Now, again, you're small and you might not have all the resources that some of the big organizations do, but that's okay because you don't have to go big or go home. You just need to use what you have. Remember, you're reaching your supporters, your community. You're not reaching the whole world. So that's okay. You use what you have. And really, this could be a smartphone and mighty cause. That's a great place to start. But there's also a lot of free tools out there. Canva has a free option. YouTube or Vimeo, you can use them for their video. Um, they have some editing tools that are free. And then that's what you're posting on Facebook, or you can add that video to your the Mighty Cause profile page that people will see. So there's a lot of options that are out there that are free. And you know what? check with other nonprofits that are in your area and say, hey, are you doing anything for Giving Tuesday? Do you want to get together and combine resources? Or what do you use when you're trying to do some of this content? So there's options that are out there. Go ahead, ask around, do a little searching online. Now, another essential trick for small nonprofits is automating, automating, automating. So you don't have the staff on hand to be sending emails or posting individual social media posts, but you know what? Neither do the, do the large orgs. So much can be done through automation and not only is this going to take the burden off of you, but it allows you to do more. So you can schedule your email blasts. You can schedule social media posts. You're going to create those things from the templates and then you're going to schedule these things. And now you're gonna be making sure you monitor, you wanna make sure the emails do go out and the posts are made. And you wanna have someone who's following up with social media for any of that donor or supporter interaction, but making sure you're following the time and all of that, you can, you can automate that. It's a huge help and it's a great peace of mind. 
You can even automate your first two thank yous. So what we do at Mighty Cause is as soon as someone submits that donation, they're taken to the thank you page. Essentially, it's a donation confirmation page, but you can customize this page for, with your own thank you message. It could have a video, it could have pictures, it can have texts. So you can have your initial, you be robust and really with your organization. And similarly with that donation receipt, you can customize a thank you message there as well. We're gonna send the receipt regardless because they need it for their taxes, it's what we do, but you can take that opportunity to send that thank you message. And with the Mighty Cause Advanced Plan we mentioned earlier, you can automate all the more when you use that, those integrations. So let's say that it's a MailChimp integration that you have. You can automate your whole welcome journey through Mighty Cause and you don't have to do anything. You just link up before and you're ready to go. So the more you can automate, the better. And also with this, keep an eye out for the either free or reduced rates for nonprofits. There's a lot of data management. Salesforce has a, a, a plan for nonprofits. So kind of keep an eye out for that those opportunities as well. And remember, you don't need to do everything. And you don't need to do what everybody else is doing. You need to do what you do and do it well. Do what resonates with your supporters and what reflects your organization. We're not keeping up with the Joneses. We're fundraising for you and for the importance of what you do in your community. We don't want to lose sight of that as we go forward. Another thing you have at your disposal, you have volunteers and you have mighty volunteers. So go ahead and ask them for help. And you might be surprised how many people in your community of supporters have hidden or maybe not so hidden talents. So maybe you know a video editor. Maybe you know someone who's that Facebook guru who just is always on and works really fast. Or maybe you know a writer who is able to put together some really great stories and some really great content for your emails and your posts. Now, there's a lot of skill sets that are out there, and there's oftentimes people who want to share. They want to be involved. They want to be helpful. They just don't know that you need them, so they don't offer. They think that you've got it managed. They, maybe they don't realize how small you are. Maybe they do know, but they think somebody else is doing it for you. So they have time. There's other people. They don't really necessarily have that big skill that they can offer, but they do have their time and they want to help. They want to be involved. These are the people who are sending thank you notes. These are the people who are following up with donors, maybe through phone calls and things like that. So if your supporters don't know that, that you need them, they don't know to step up to fill in that gap. So the takeaway here is go ahead and ask for help. Include a request in your upcoming newsletter, do a special email, advertising not only giving tuesday is coming but here's how you can be involved you can post on social media you can even just talk to people if there's people who are either on your staff or on your board say hey can you help or do you know anyone who can and some great things for volunteers to do which is just about anything although we do want to be careful of donor information you can delegate so many things so you could do social media. And actually, part of what's great with this electronic world that we're living in, they could do social media things. They can draft emails, develop content. They can do some marketing. They could work on their writing cause page. They can do all of this from anywhere. They don't have to be at your headquarters. And for some of you, your headquarters are your home. And you can't have all these people in your home, but they can help. And they can do that because it's electronic. Others, if they are going to write the thank you notes or they're going to do phone calls, they can do that from their home. So these options really are endless. Now, at other times, you want to bring those supporters together. Maybe you want to have a time where you're, you rent out a space at the library and you bring all your supporters together and you're writing thank you notes for two hours. It's a great time of camaraderie. It's a great time of service together. And again, that's part of what Giving Tuesday is about. It's about that collaboration of generosity. And that happens not only when people donate, but when your supporters get together to make Giving Tuesday happen. Now, our last tip 
is that follow-up. So you want to have a plan, just like we needed a plan at the beginning for how we're going to attack Giving Tuesday. We also want to plan for how we're going to follow up with our donors and our supporters. Now, for sure, we want to make sure that we're following up with those new donors who came through Giving Tuesday. Part of the whole point is bringing in that awareness of your organization, bringing in those new donor relationships. So make sure from the beginning that you're onboarding those donors, that you're thanking them, and you're starting to steward that donor relationship. And for your existing donors, as well as your new ones, definitely take the time to start preparing them for your end of year campaign. So end of year's coming, Giving Tuesday doesn't replace end of year donations and fundraising. So don't miss that opportunity to be engaging those donors and, and carrying on whether it's the same mission statement or maybe your messaging starts to shift. But that's what you can do with these donors and with these supporters. Be sure that you're thanking them. They've done a lot of work to help get you where you are with Giving Tuesday. So we want to make sure that we're including them in the thank you along the way. And that timely thank you, we don't want to give a couple of weeks in between. We want to hit those thank yous hard, especially for things that are going out in the mail. You can have your thank yous ready before Giving Tuesday, and you're just adding names and donation amounts, things of that nature after the fact. But how do you thank your donors? You can call them, you can write to them, you can personalize an email from the higher ups. Take for example, you're a small organization. So you are the higher up, but you're also the low man on the totem pole and that's okay. You're gonna let your donors know we're small and this is who I am and this is what I'm doing which is why their donation means even more than they might realize. You're gonna use this time to say thank you to, to show them, yeah, we are small, but we are mighty. So make sure that as you're personalizing your thank yous, which can sound daunting, but remember you've got volunteers, you have others, and it doesn't have to be a handwritten note. It could be a letter and things like that. So you get creative, but make sure that it's personal. And also make sure that you're closing that campaign loop. So people want to know how the big day went. They were part of this and they want to see your success. So go ahead and post your results on social media. Add them to your website. Maybe you type up a quick blog and you're going to brag about your donors and your supporters and your success. You could send out an email blast with not only following up with with the success of the day, but also maybe you do some shout outs to some of your big supporters or anyone, may, let's say that you had a couple of community partners that stepped in with a matching grant or a major donation, give a shout out to those. And as you begin to put the funds in use, you wanna follow up down the road. It's not, okay, we had Giving Tuesday, we raised this much, now we're done. No, let's say that you had a particular initiative or a new program, or even if you're just continuing on something you've already done, Show your supporters how things are going. Show them what their donations are doing in your nonprofit, in your community. You wanna tell the rest of the story. Paul Harvey was a big success, partially because he told the first part and then the rest of the story. That's what your donors and your supporters wanna see. And that brings that Giving Tuesday 2023, that full circle. Now you're bringing that rapport to your donors and you're encouraging them as because you reach out down the road, you're encouraging them to go ahead and return next year. So it's an interesting thing as you're planning for Giving Tuesday 2023, you're actually starting to build that cycle that will start to play out even in 2024. So as we go into Giving Tuesday, you might be a small nonprofit, but that's okay because you've got this, you've got the tools, you've got this. And the five fun, fundraising tips that we're gonna hold on to as that, non, as that small nonprofit for Giving Tuesday, you're gonna have your smart goals, you're gonna have your game plan, you're gonna be driving support, you're gonna be using what you have, and you're gonna be following up with those donors and those supporters. So you might be small, but your mission and your ability is certainly mighty. And we're excited to see your success on Giving Tuesday. 
I just want to thank everybody again for joining us. I'm sure we have a couple of questions. I did see a few come up in the chat. I'm going to read through the chat a little bit to pull up some of those questions. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to post in our uh, chat box as well. I have a link if anyone is interested in the Mighty Cause plan and taking advantage of those Giving Tuesday perks. I'm going to post a link in the chat. You can use this link to request an advanced demo, or if you would like to, you're more than welcome to list your email address in the chat. I'll be happy to get you connected with one of our specialists. Um, there's also going to be the option in the survey that follows the webinar that you're welcome to request a demo that way too. So there's some options there. As a reminder, and I saw a couple of, of requests we are going to be sending a recording and the slide deck to anyone who's registered for this webinar. So if you need to jump off from the question and answer time early, no worries. In a couple of days, we'll have the recording and the, uh, the slide deck for anyone who registered. Also, in a couple of days, we'll be sure to have this webinar up on the Giving Tuesday website so that if there's another organization or someone else in your organization you would like to be able to see the webinar, they can certainly review it there as well. So I'm gonna take just a moment to read through. And I do apologize if my internet was the one that was cutting out. I certainly hope that it wasn't. Um, so I, I do apologize I certainly apologize for that if it was. So regarding, and I'm I'm actually, so I see Pam's question and I'm just taking a quick moment to read through Carrie's response. And Carrie is correct. The donations, if someone selects a specific, either donation amount, we also have within the donation checkout flow for someone if they wanna make either a dedication or a designation. So if donations are designated to a particular area, those amounts, as far as Mighty Cause is concerned, we submit that information to you through the donation reports. Now, if they select a donation amount, not restricted at all, just as Carrie said, it's just to entice people to give and to take ownership of that donation. Now, if the Donation, if the donation is designated, that designated amount will be provided or listed in the donation report. Now the funds are for you to use however you see fit, but just from a, a place of transparency and ethically, we, we suggest that you kind of follow along uh, with how donations are designated. You don't have to put in designations. So that's uh, a way to sort of avoid that if you don't want to pigeonhole anything. And Carrie, I appreciate your help um, taking a moment to add in that Canva information as well. Okay, so um, we have a question about how do we get the pricing options and things like that moving forward. You can go ahead and select the uh, link that was there, and that'll get you paired up with one of our experts who will go through all of the pricing. Uh, also, churches are welcome to use the platform. What we do is we go based on the IRS 501c3 public charity status of an organization. We do have the option for fiscally sponsored organizations as well. So uh, specifically, if you're curious about your organization, unfortunately, uh, there are restrictions because we're a donor advised fund. However, I would say go ahead and reach out and we'll be happy to take a look to see if we can can assist you or you know where you fall within the platform. All right, just a moment. I'm going to read through a couple others here. So Jerome has a, a nonprofit. It's still more in the getting built out um, realm. He's he's sort of in that season. And he asked, you know, what, what does he do? He doesn't really have a team that he can use. So a couple of things. There's a lot on Mighty Cause. You can jump in and, and just kind of plug in 
and you can get your page up and going. You can share it on social media and it doesn't need any of the extras. So that is certainly an option just to start with the bare bones. The other thing that I would would maybe suggest or see if, if you have anyone, and I know community is a big word, but just people that you know, that you could say, hey, would you mind giving me an hour of your time to, to look through? And, and you could say, I've got this information together. Do you mind just helping me work through, let's say the email templates? Do you mind giving me an hour and just helping me plug in information to these email templates while he's he or she's doing that? Maybe you're setting up your, your Facebook posts or your Twitter uh, posts and what you're gonna do. So you're kind of tag teaming. So that might be one thing, just ask a few people that you know, hey, can I just get an hour of your time? Go ahead and look through our toolkit and then see how you can kind of filter out some of the different things. The great thing with Mighty Cause, you can even do the bare bones and it's gonna be a great page that you're gonna be sending out all over the internet and you're gonna be emailing to anybody and everybody you know. So even with that, I would say, just start with the bare bones and then take a look at the toolkit to see what you might wanna uh, might want to share that way. Okay. And I see a couple people who have requested the demo. I am going to take a look. Uh, Mary, I do see you. And Mary asks, is it possible to arrange for donations to be sent by Mighty Cause to your PayPal account rather than your bank account? So unfortunately, the way that the our disbursements go because we're a donor advised fund. We only have two options. The disbursements are either dispersed via check to the legal address that we have on file. We download the legal address from the IRS database. So either checks can go there. If there's been a change of address, we definitely have a way for you to provide that information or we send it via bank account EFT. So unfortunately, those are the only two options. For those of you who haven't set up an EFT option, it's certainly free to do, it's easy to do. Uh, it's actually cheaper because we do have a $5 service fee for every check that goes out. Uh, so we recommend the EFT. Also with EFT, we disperse twice a month. And with checks, they're only dispersed once, once a month. So disbursements can be done once you've claimed your page and you're on Mighty Cause, you can do that through the disbursement setting. So Mary, I do apologize for that, but we have to do either the bank account or the or the, um, the check. And now that nonprofit toolkit, that is available to anybody and everybody to use. You don't need the advanced plan. You All you need to do is register. It's free to register for Giving Tuesday. Registration is open. Uh, so you can register at any time. I don't even think you have to be registered to use the toolkit. You don't. You can just check it out on the website. So the that's available to anybody. So for first time um, Giving Tuesday participants, Gina, I'm going to come back to that. I'm going to see. I think there might be some other questions that are similar that we can kind of bring them in together. Allison, yes. So if you do have volunteers that assist with your Mighty Cause page, in, for in order for someone to do anything on Mighty Cause, sort of what I'm going to say on the back end of your profile page, they do need to be an admin. They need to have admin access, administrator access. So they would need to have a user account on Mighty Cause, and then we give that user account admin access. Now, all admins have the same access. So what that means is you as the founder of the organization, same as a volunteer. Now that might be okay as long as you are okay with your volunteer seeing information, which will include donor information. It will also, if you choose to do EFT, include your EFT information. So you do wanna be careful what volunteers. Now I know some organizations are completely volunteer run. So of course it'll be a volunteer as an administrator. But anyone who's an admin doing work on the Mighty Cause page will see the back end. Now, if someone creates a fundraiser page, they're not an admin for your Mighty Cause page, but they do create their own fundraiser page. They are the admin for their page and their page only. 
they will be able to see their donors. They'll have a donation report so that they can reach out and thank their donors. They won't have any access to anybody else, to anybody else's donors. It'll just be their one page. So I hope that that is helpful. Just a few more minutes to read through. So for Richland Gives, Rebecca, that's actually a separate giving event. Uh, through, as Mighty Cause, we are a platform for several giving events. So for Richland Gives, that's going to be different. I'm going to suggest reach out either to Richland Gives, but actually I would just say go ahead and email us at support at mightycause.com. Uh, just support at mightycause.com and, and check in on that. And we can give you that specific information. And Gina, I haven't forgotten about you. I'm just going through to make sure. And I'm going to actually repost that link. Javier, so you don't have the link. I'm just reposting that now. Let's just see. I'm excited to see all the emails. And I'm excited to, to kind of link everybody up with some of our specialists. And Naomi, thank you for reposting that link. I'm sorry, I haven't quite gotten down there yet. Okay, Trisha, let's take a look real quick here. Okay, so Trisha, yep, yeah, we'll get you all of that pricing. Um, and it, yep, we will absolutely um, take care of you. But uh, Trisha, do you mind, go ahead and just post your, your email address for me. And Robert asked the difference between EFT account or ACH. In, in Mighty Cause language, the main, chain, the main differences are we use Mighty Cause disperses funds through the electronic funds transfer from Mighty Cause to the organization. We do provide an ACH option for donors where a donor can donate through their bank account. And that's the ACH option. I believe the donation minimum is $50 in order for the ACH option to appear on the donation checkout form. Donor doesn't have to use it, but they're welcome to. So as far as the Mighty Cause side, that's the, the difference. That ACH donation will come to Mighty Cause and then be dispersed through EFT. So Robert, I hope that that's helpful. And yep, I will go ahead and get that toolkit link. Give me just a moment, I'll be happy to post that. I apologize, I didn't have that up, up and going. I'm, that, that's certainly realistic. Give me just a moment, I'll get that posted. All right, so Gina, a couple of quick things as far as just some, some tips for, for those who are brand new. The first thing, definitely go ahead, jump in there and make sure that you're registered. That'll always be the first thing. The second is just with Giving Tuesday as a whole, it's a, a great opportunity. Just reach out to your supporters and get them familiar with the idea of Giving Tuesday now. So I, I went ahead and I did just post that nonprofit toolkit. Uh, start to get, get your supporters familiar with that phrasing. Hey, Giving Tuesday is coming. This is what it is. Give them a little bit of heads up of what's going on. And then you're going to periodically be uh, growing those, those reach outs. So it might start with one every four weeks, and then now it's going to be every two weeks, and then it's every week, and then you have a couple Within a week, same thing with your posts on social media, just sort of be building up the momentum. Don't think, oh, I've reached out enough. I think that's a big tip is have a plan. And within our toolkit, you'll see within the marketing and communications, we give some timelines of how much you want to be ad advertising, we'll say. So you want to be advertising, hey, it's coming. And then you want to start to do your, this is our mission. This is what we're doing. A couple of other tips uh, after just education in general, if you can do try to bring in some help uh, just because you're still running a nonprofit, whether you're running it or you do something else at the nonprofit, you're still doing your nonprofit work. 
And so bringing in others to help. So you're not feeling like, Oh, all of this is on my shoulders. No, no, no. Bring in others to help. Even if it's what feels maybe like simple things, bring in others to help. And even with that, and I, as I, I had, um, mentioned it, I, I, it was either Javier or Richard. I don't, I apologize. I don't remember, uh, get the bare minimum, get your profile page set up and ready to go. Cause that organization profile page that can be shared on Facebook a million times a day. Uh, it also can be emailed. So it's the link is there. You can also use the link that goes straight to that checkout flow. So the key things when you register and then you claim your organization and you're on your organization page or logged in, there's going to be a to-do list towards the upper left corner. Just fill in everything on that to-do list that you can. That's going to be your bare minimum. That's going to be the best start. So educate your supporters that it's coming, educate them what it's about and let them know there's cash prizes. There's opportunity here to to really grow. And so their, their donations aren't just their donation, but it's an opportunity to grow. Um, so, so that um, education, you're going to want to get registered, use that to-do list, and you're not going to want to do it by yourself. I would say those are the three big tips if, the, if you're brand new to the, um, to the fundraising. Richard asked the benefits of using Mighty Cause if we already have a donation platform and a CRM. A big thing is any activity that's been done on Mighty Cause, which also means if someone creates a fundraiser page or something like that, they or submits for a um, offline donation and you've added them in, all of that information is going to be there. Uh, that's one thing, all of your past history and going forward. Uh, also, you can do different things with where you're tagging people and things like that. So it's it just has everything there is a, a big piece. You're not having to move the information either from Mighty Cause or where you currently have it to a different system. Everything is just already in-house and certainly you can use it at any time for sure. And Colleen asked about uh, registration. Uh, so yes, if you've been using Mighty Cause for donations, you still do need to register for Giving Tuesday. And the reason why is we need to know what leaderboard to put you on. And we also need to know that you that you really want to participate. Now that might sound silly, but there's some organizations that say, uh, no, we do something different at a different time of year, or we have a big initiative coming up in mid-December. We don't want to share donations, whatever it might be. So we want to know for sure that you want to be involved in Giving Tuesday. A big thing is the leaderboards. Also, when we are sending out our communication, you'll start to, to see very heavy um, nonprofit, or excuse me, Giving Tuesday communications. And you want to make sure that you're getting all those and you make sure by being by being registered. So you'll be getting alerts about Giving Tuesday webinars and things like that. But the key thing is prizes. We want to know that that you want to be involved in the prizes. And I want to thank everyone. I've seen a number of emails come through. I thank you for those. Give us give us a short time. I'll make sure that we get you paired up. I'm really glad the information was helpful. Um, I also see a, another question from Arnold King, and I and this is a great question. Can you connect your SMART goals to your organization fundraising? Absolutely. You can tie them all together and you can be promoting those goals to your donors so that they know you can have, we're going to have a campaign that's focused on gaining recurring donors. And maybe you have a fundraiser page that's dedicated to that, or maybe you have a fundraiser page that's dedicated to your, we'll call them Giving Tuesday alumni from last year. And and the really the goal is give again and give a little more and you can word it a little different, but maybe the goal is, Hey, we're asking everybody to give us an additional $5. It's less than 50 cents a month. So things of that nature, by all means, feel free to, to present those goals to your, to your donors as well. And Jenny asked who's eligible to register for giving Tuesday. 
any 501c3 nonprofit public charity registered with the IRS, you are welcome. If you're found on our platform, you can register. And if you're a new nonprofit with that 501c3 public charity status, you can submit, hey, say, hey, here's our letter. We might not be in that IRS database just yet showing up exactly, but here we are. We'll be happy to add you to the platform and you can register. So anyone and everyone is more than welcome to register and we're happy to have you. We're happy to help you kind of get started and um, our customer support team when you're when you provide any of that documentation, you know, feel free to reach out to say, hey, we really do belong and we'll we'll help take care of you. So Jenny, if you know any other organization that might be interested and they're just not familiar with Mighty Cause yet, go ahead and share this webinar with them. You know, that that could help them and and get them tied in. And it is, it's almost three o'clock. So we've, we've gone over by about 10 minutes. I'm grateful for the questions. Uh, please feel free. If anyone has additional questions, you're welcome to reach out to us at support at mightycause.com. That's our, our support email. Uh, please feel free to reach out and we can assist in any way. If you provided your email, we'll be following up with one of our specialists. And also please feel free in the, uh, in the, I just lost the word in the survey, let us know any additional topics you would like us to be covering. And also if you'd like, you can go ahead and, uh, request that demo there. So we will call it a day. We're looking forward to seeing all of you on, on giving Tuesday. And for all of you who had questions, I'm glad that it was helpful for anyone who reached out. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your Tuesday. Thank you.